the game easy enough. So we'll see if that's actually going to happen here between these two players. Super excited for this matchup. Cedric, I want to know where we're at in the game when the tipping point here hits. Is it turn three? Is it Soren be. involved? It could be turn three. Soren, uh, we kind of call it the Planeswalker show and tell a little bit here. Look. If Matt Sperling's going to be winning this matchup, it is going to be him playing a Soren on turn number three or four and putting a Vein Ripper into play off of that. So if I'm watching this match, that's exactly what I'm looking for is does that one-two punch take place? And if it does, got to imagine Sperling's going to be winning from there. Absolutely. I'm playing a little bit of this deck, and boy, oh boy, is it fun to cheat this bad boy out. That card is just, it is big. It is a pain to kill because you have to sacrifice a creature and they can interact with you anyway. And even if it does die, of course, you know, there's some drain and some gain that's happening there. So this could be, this could be the breakout deck of the tournament. I think we all want it to be. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, some of us. I think we all want it to be. Listen, Cedric, it's, uh, for me, no more lies. I'm going to tell you to get lost. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, Very I don't nice. like it at all. Very uh, nice. One time, just Vein Ripper right on the battlefield and take him there. That's what I'm hoping for. Sorry, Brennan. I really like you, but like, what are we talking about? Drains and gains and ripping veins. I'm going to send it hey. off to Marshall and Monty in the booth here with round number seven. How are we supposed to keep up with these? <laughs> I genuinely don't know how you follow that up. <laughs> on, yeah, welcome back to the booth here. So we're getting ready for a matchup that we've seen, a, you know, these two decks uh, not play against each other, but separately, and uh, it's another test for the Vampires deck. You know, I think there's there's a feeling in the community about, like, let's make this thing real, and uh, this will be another test of it. It's going to be playing against Amalia Combo in the hands of Brendan DeCandio, who, who's experienced with the deck. Yeah, absolutely. And Vampires, so far in its test on camera, it won. Amalia really does feel like it has something to prove because we've now seen Amalia on camera twice. Yeah. It's lost both. So yeah. Brennan really trying, you know, indirectly, that's not going through his mind. But for us, Brennan is trying to break that streak and not be the third Amalia loss on camera in a row here. Let's see what happens. Two creature-based decks, one a little more fair than the other, but both of them have that gear. You see Matt Sperling down on the bottom part of your screen, Brennan up at the top. And they are underway. Looks like Brendan's won the die roll. He's going to start things off with the tap land pass to turn back over to Matt. I'll go to 18 and he's going to thought seize on turn one. Well, you see a, a pair of collected companies over to the side there. Innkeeper, Wild Growth Walker, Dina, and another Overgrown Tomb rounding out the hand. So the two companies, that is definitely the strength point for the Amalia deck when you can get to it. A big question here for Matt's hand is how fast is it and how much interaction you have? Mm -hmm. You may be interested in just taking the innkeeper to slow things down, well, say, well, I don't well. want you to have the treasure. Uh -huh. If you think you can't stop Go the ahead. combo, you take the walker, you don't need as much removal. So really, the question is, is Matt just going to go Soren Vein Ripper, and then treasure. Brennan's hand might be too slow? Okay. Yeah, he did take the Wild Growth Walker, indicating that either he's more concerned about the combo or that he doesn't have another way to break it up in his hand, and we'll find out shortly here, I'm sure. Also, of course, this deck has its own game plan pushing forward. It does. Notably, Brendan did play a Razor Verge Thicket that turn. Ah. Matt knows Overgrown Tomb was the land Brendan had in hand. So now the cards are face up. Brendan has access to four mana next turn. That is going to be the Collected Company coming out. That's right. And uh, you know another card? Yep. Is that turns so cards face up? Tomb, Thought yeah. sees, you know another card that turns cards face Duress. up? Duress. Duress. And he has Ooh. annihilated his hand as Matt Sperling taken both copies of Collected Company from Brendan to Candio. So if this does become a grindy game, Matt has uh, at least put a big dent in that plan there from Brennan. Brennan drew a court of calling. So half the combo one, is assembled. If you draw an Amalia or a Wild Growth Walker, you have the other piece in hand. And okay. with the Dina on the battlefield, this isn't a, I'm going to try to stabilize, etc. Matt will just die. So it, it, Matt needs a removal spell. If he just goes Vein Ripper here, it would be really good. But there is a chance that Brennan could just end this game really quickly. It's going to be a Fable of the Mirror Breaker here for Sperling, but... Matt Sperling. It's me. It's literally my card. You can't ask a man to not play his he own token. a token that's him. And the judge said, can we use the real one? And, and he protested. 
We'll see if that sticks or not. <laughs> Usually the Look, judges say, ah, I don't really care who's on it. I cannot imagine a <laughs> more powerful argument than the words, it's me. That's me, though. <laughs> All right. L Lunark veteran, I believe, the draw here for Brennan. So not a combo piece. Okay. But he is threatening because play a two-mana creature, then with Convoke, you have access to five mana. Uh -huh. So at the current game state, he is threatening the combo should he draw either combo piece, okay. and it's just a win. So that is something, you know, indirectly Matt should be aware of. Of course, he ripped apart Brennan's hand and didn't see that Court of Color. Uh, that is the big thing, thing going for <laughs> Brennan right now, is that is an Real unknown life? card. Treason. Okay. Oh, sure. <laughs> he, he did lose the token fight. <laughs> he didn't look happy about it. But, Unlucky. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you see the Goblin Shaman there taking the place of the illustrious Matt Sperling token that was there before. And it looks like Brennan is just firing off the Court of Calling here after casting the Lunar Veteran. Okay, so Brennan has a game plan. Yeah. There's Amalia. He doesn't want to wait to draw one piece or the other. He's just adding to the board. Does he have a, a, a way to move his game plan forward that doesn't involve just the straight up combo by doing this? Right now with the Dina and the Amalia, this is a fast clock just in drains. Okay. Uh, and one of the benefits is because you're getting two life gain triggers, that's two explorers with the Amalia immediately. So this helps you dig for a combo piece, whether it's Collected Company, Wild Growth Walker, or another Court of Calling. So Redden can definitely just try to dig to the walker here. Of course, there, there it is. Return to the ranks does get a walker back from the graveyard, so. Hey, if we remember back on turn one, Matt Sperling <laughs> thought seized one away. Onus is on Matt now to have a way to break things up if Brennan goes for it. So Matt's going to get to untap, get his trigger, yep. try to find a way to kill Amalia. Is that... Killing Amalia is the big one, and you want to do it on your turn before Brennan can sack it to Dina, potentially. Okay. Uh, but if you do it on your turn, then Return then to the Ranks, return to the ranks <laughs> brings it back. Yeah. And that's how you see things are really I getting see. in a rough spot for Matt, because suddenly you pass the turn, mm -hmm. Brennan could just not go for it. Attack, Matt's only at 11, and this is the issue with the position that Brennan had put Matt in, is... Matt might to be, need to be more proactive than he wants to be. I see. And then gets punished by the return to the ranks. Especially with a hand that started off with Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize, Dress. Yeah. Not that proactive, of course. Right. It, it's really the fact that Brennan has been able to put together these pieces that aren't necessarily the combo, mm -hmm. but they are the most aggressive line the deck is able to take. Dina is one of the key pieces in terms of pressuring your opponent because it turns all of these life gains into mini pings to your opponent. Yeah, Matt cannot afford to just sit around here, no doubt about that. And you see the Blood Tithe Harvester and the Smuggler's Copter in the graveyard there. He's going to cast a Blood Tithe Harvester. There's a sorcery speed answer, but not now. Yeah, so the real question here for Brennan is, do you go for it with Matt representing a Fatal a Push? A Fatal Push, okay. Because if you just attack here, Matt can make blocks. Matt can say Blood Tithe Harvester in front of Dina. So this is the big test of how does Brennan see his position in this game improving versus devolving and whether you need to get aggressive or whether you want to go for the return to the ranks. Is it a disaster if Matt has it? It's not a complete disaster, but Brennan doesn't really have the resources to completely refuel. It's just the fact that he's ahead, so he might have some time. What's your read? Nice Do you think Matt has it? <laughs> I think Matt has to play as if he has it, but given the resources he used at the start of the game, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaning Matt doesn't have it. I am, too. He discarded two cards that turn, by the way. He discarded the Copter and the Blood Tithe. Yeah, monster, so yeah. I, I certainly think Matt didn't have it going into the turn. Now, maybe a little less sure. But here's an interesting thing. In Matt's spot, if you don't have it, mm -hmm. I think there's a chance you're supposed to attack with your Goblin Token, make a treasure. That extra mana lets you sacrifice the Blood Token to dig one more card deeper. Oh, interesting. So the willingness to not play into that, maybe that's a sign he does have it. Oh, okay, tips it back over, perhaps. By the way, life total's getting sketchy here for Sperling. 
Yeah, Brennan. You can see he's going to have to just block here. Brennan is in the aggressive position, has Dina, every creature coming down, extremely costly because you get two explore triggers on the Amalia and you get to push that pressure with the drains. Mm -hmm. That's just Dina eating the blocked Amalia and saying that I'm going to pump this into six power and just get it. Wow. Look at Spurling. Is he still feigning it, or he, actually considering he, he a fatal push here? He can't really do it just because he's not pressuring enough unless he untaps and has a discard spell. He can't just break up the return to the ranks that comes out the next turn and just ends the game, so. He does have it, there it is, fatal push. But the return of the ranks can eat, can put together everything again. Trigger this in kind of times for dreams. And you see that Brendan DeCandio immediately <laughs> snaps it off. Yeah. And, and Sperling can't do anything about it. And that's gonna be game number it. one going to Brendan DeCandio. Man, I, I got to say, you can really see the experience that Brennan has here, right? He ha he was pretty confident with each, with each of those plays, and he knew, I've got you either way. Yeah. Like, we can play fair, and I'm going to just grind you out because you spent all your turns thoughts easing me. Your life total's low. And if you have that, I'm just going to combo you off. And if you don't, you're going to take six, and you're going to be at five facing down a bunch of triggers. Yeah, the unfortunate part for Matt was he couldn't even play in a way where he doesn't put the Dina in the graveyard yeah. until after Brennan goes for the combo because Brennan had another Dina. So it was just always going to end there. Yeah. Really, really tough spot there for Sperling. All Great right, play for Brennan. Yeah, really nice from Brennan there. Smuggler's Copter. Brennan once again trying to pick up a victory on camera here <laughs> for Amalia combo. We haven't seen that quite yet today. He's doing well off camera. Five and one for him. Definitely. So Amalia in his hands serving him well, but for us, we haven't seen the deck win yet, and that game looked convincing. Well, in the True. interest of science, Monty, we, we disregard sample size entirely, yes. and we'll judge these decks based on what we've seen on camera only. Yeah, this might be an unplayable Vampire's That's deck, or Amalia is just the worst deck in Pioneer. That's right. We'll, we'll know shortly. Yeah. 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 One, or, one or two games away. Game. Yeah, <laughs> we're almost there. This is how Pro Tour testing goes, you know? You see the Blood Tithe Harvester hit now hit the board for Sperling, and that allowed him to get in the Smuggler's Copter and start doing the loot thing. It looks like he had a redundant Smuggler's Copter, so he discarded that. Brennan could, in theory, just go land Life Gainer, Wild Growth Walker, yep. start the combo, but no such luck here. Sonoti Scout here for Brennan, and you see he, <clears throat> he explored, and it looks like he wasn't interested in the court. Yeah, that's interesting call from him, saying that he's not interested in the Court of Colin, considering that is, you know, able to tutor for any combo piece. 15, 15. Maybe saying that he's a bit starved on mana. Mm -hmm. I, I would guess that might be a nod that he has collected company in hand as is looking for the fourth land. Oh, interesting. You saw a fatal push there from Spurling. That takes care of Amalia on end step. Actually, Brennan has a fourth line and two collected companies in hand. So maybe just saying that I'm not going to need this Court of Calling. Really curious to see what Sperling has for this turn. We haven't seen any Vein Rippers, any Sorens, anything of that very powerful combo that this deck is capable of putting together just yet. It's been a much more fair game you know, resembling just a normal Rakdos mid-range deck. Removal, hand disruption, that kind of thing. Yeah, if Sperling was able to get a Vein Ripper on the battlefield, it would be strong. Brennan's deck, very few ways to remove Vein Ripper outside of pulling off its combo. Mm. The big issue is Brennan's deck Vampire gains a lot of incidental life, and not yeah. incidental, but intended life, throughout the combo and the creatures Two that is placed. So sometimes a Vein Ripper just doesn't drain enough. Look at this start here from Sperling. <laughs> he just played this turn two more copies of Blood Tithe Harvester following up the one from last turn and the Smuggler's Copter, who untapped land. We know why. Brennan's at 10. I think Sperling knows why as well after yeah. untapped land pass. We've had a lot of years with Collected Company now, and it's just everybody knows. Yeah. I think Shockland Pass is yeah. the poster child of Collected Company. You, you might as well just put the Collected Company down with the Shockland. <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting there <laughs> waiting for you to cast it. Yeah, you know, I know. 
casters know, <laughs> everybody right, knows. Right. The Twitch chat knows, and Twitch chat doesn't know much. So right. that's how you know even, everybody even knows. Even they know. Even they know. <laughs> Brennan's smiling, though. He's not feeling the pressure of this board. He must run really well with Collected Company if he's smiling. <laughs> Never missed. He's also, you know, pretty seasoned. He's been playing this game for quite a while at high levels. He is a competitor. Monty, we got problems. We just angered Twitch chat. Uh-oh. Yeah. Where are they going to do? Come to this Chicago? Is, this is going to be a long weekend. <laughs> we, we better make up. Let's see what Brennan hits off of his collected company. You saw the attack was just with the one blood tithe harvester from Sperling. Yeah, wants to what make a sure. Weird situation to be in. You just know your opponent has collected company. Yep. Yeah, wants to make sure. Hey, if two combo pieces are hit here, I want to use two harvesters to kill them while I can right. before Brennan taps and finds the third. And that is somewhat what happened. There's a wild growth walker and yeah. a prosperous innkeeper hitting the battlefield. I think the hand Not for true. Brennan is two copies of Night Errand of Eos, as well as the Sky Cleave Apparition and another collected company. So the ways for Brennan to refuel here, a lot of them. Not really running low on gas. That's a good place to be against a mid-range deck that's not pulling off its high end. Yeah, you know, the, the interesting thing about the Amalia combo, it doesn't seem particularly three, fast. Three, I, I know it technically can have after. turn three yeah. or whatever it is, but generally not super fast, but really resilient. Really, really like, resilient. This thing creates new board states out of nothing often. Yep. The combination of collected company and return to the ranks, being able to essentially bring any board back or recreate a board really strong. And then the card selection that goes along with it, it just makes for one of, if not the most resilient creature combo deck maybe we've ever seen. Yeah. All right, so there's one of the Blood Tithe Harvesters being used to take down the Wild Growth Walker. Key combo piece there. Yeah, we just still haven't quite seen a lot of pressure from Sperling. It is adding up. Brennan's down to eight, <laughs> but just oh. not, you know, the, the big hit. That's a return, Marshall. <laughs> that was oh, a return off the top. Are you serious? It, it might not be matter. <laughs> Renan could just go return these two. Both pieces are in the yard. I have the life gain creature. Resolved. Yeah. All right. Well, he's going to go for collected company here. Sperling says, you got it. D miss one time. <laughs> there are no misses when you're playing this deck. <laughs> yeah. And still has the ability to go for the return because I see at least a Prosperous Innkeeper there. Uh, so that'll give you treasures. There's also a Lunark Veteran. So Brennan could just go for it. Now, notably, this game missing the Dina, so it doesn't have the immediate mm -hmm. kill you ability. So life total will go up a lot. Amalia will get really big. Everything else will die. Mm -hmm. But then if Matt can remove the Amalia after that, Okay, let's okay. let's rebuild. Uh, We're back in the game. Not, not game. to put you on the spot, life total wise, but what are we talking about here? <laughs> it's gonna be around seventy-ish. Okay, a lot. <laughs> I, I made up a number, but you <laughs> a know, real lot. A lot, though. a yeah. lot. It, it's twenty explorers plus however many lands you hit, mm -hmm. and then each one is gaining you three life in the process. I see. So. 60, I added some for lands. And I like it. Went for 70. Yeah. But way more than enough, you know, to give him a cushion of a lot of time against the output that Matt can put up. Yeah, and, and that's there it is. the big issue. <laughs> Matt's big payoff, Vayne Ripper. Yeah. Vayne Ripper, it's doing a lot of unfair things, but all of them have ultimately boiled down to getting your life total to zero. Exactly. Yeah, it's a lot harder to bring 70 to zero than it is 12. And by the way, yeah, there isn't a Vein there. Ripper in sight yeah. currently. Yeah, we're not even close to that yeah. conversation at the moment. All right, combo assembled. All right, here we go. Matt could have a response, but, you know. Yeah, you see the two lands down there for Sperling. I'll fatal push Amalia. Okay, I'll fatal push Amalia. Uh, All right, that breaks up the combo. But two creatures enter the battlefield. 
three life gain creatures. That's a life. That's six. Yep. Still, eighteen. Yeah, that is how you interrupt things. Now the question is, with two knight <laughs> errant of Eos in hand, mm -hmm. can you avoid Brennan finding an Amalia again next turn? Right. And eh. <laughs> For three, trigger it. And Brandon notably back up to 18. That, yeah. that six life is nothing to scoff at when Matt here is trying to chip away three at a time. Yeah, Spurling just doesn't seem Maybe to have 15, to something incredibly powerful to get him out of this. We've seen Vayne Ripper do that, but as you said, you know, even a modest amount of life gain is looking pretty good here. Yeah, Spurling does have access to some board wipes in uh, his sideboard mm -hmm. has access to Path of Peril, has access to Extinction Event. Drawing one of those wouldn't be the worst here. Extinction Event's nice. Yeah. The big issue is just the fact that Brennan can continue rebuilding. There's the Skyclave Apparition. I mean, again, we haven't seen Vayne Ripper from Spurling, which is a game changer. Yeah. But this has very much felt like these decks are even with each other, yep. except for that Brennan just has this explosive combo built into it. Matt has very much played this trading yep. game, right? Yep. It's like one for one, one for one. They buy it back, break up your combo. But he's not getting ahead. Look at his board. He's got four power out. Matt is really playing the type of deck that this Amalia combo deck wants to prey on. Yeah. And unfortunately, we've seen some other mid-range decks have these over-the-top elements or attack your land elements, and you're not able to put things together. But the angle on which Matt is attacking, and, you know, to the credit of the deck not drawing, unfortunately, it it's just not lining up well against what Brennan has had, which... In short, is everything. Brennan has had every refuel necessary. Yeah. Everything. There's Knight Aaron, and we see Dina now as well. Five and twenty-seven. The clock is just amped up now. Yeah. So how many gain life creatures are on the battlefield There's now? There's four now. There's four now. <laughs> so Dina came down, drained for three. Then the Lunar Veteran came down, drained for another three. And Spurling's now at five? 27 to five. That's where we're at after that turn. Wow, this matchup yeah, looks real tough. Now, maybe it looks different if we see a turn three Vayne Ripper or something, but like from what we've seen here, this is a very, very steep hill to climb for Matt Spurling from the beginning of the game. Yeah. He hasn't had bad draws. I think Cedric mentioned it at the desk is Vayne Ripper. That's the name of the game for this deck in general. But sometimes we've seen, okay, maybe this mid range strategy can work for me. Not here. No. Not against these draws. Matt had all the discard game one. Didn't work. This game, he's had some disruption. Perfect hasn't worked. It, it's just too resilient on the Amalia side. Brendan DeCandio patiently allowing Sperling to uh, start churning through these blood Sperling tokens Harvester that draw. he's been around. He's discarding Harvesters. He's discarding really good cards, yep. by the way. Fable was the first one, and that's going to do it. Nothing there for Ooh, Matt Sperling and Brendan DeCandio. Now he makes Amalia combo sing. Yeah, first it time looked we... excellent, that match. <laughs> I think this is the terrifying creature combo deck that Amalia was hyped up to be when it mm -hmm. first really came on the scene a few months ago uh, with Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Mm -hmm. And you saw in that game exactly what the deck is capable of, which is incredibly powerful things. Yes, we've seen a struggle a bit, but in Brennan's hands, both with his plays and with the lines that were available to him, it just looked unstoppable. It did. That looked like they could play that 10 times and Sperling would have a really difficult time. Of course, we want to know what it looks like with Vayne Ripper, but still, the way it played out there, really, really tough. Okay, we got more magic to bring you here. Let's head over to the news desk where Maria and Cedric are there to us. Hey everybody, us up. coming up next, we have Adrian Inigo versus Matthew Judas. The name of the game for Adrian is Mana, Mana, and more Mana. With Lotus Field, anything is possible once its namesake land is on the battlefield. For Is It Phoenix, it's about getting those 3-2 flyers on the battlefield as quickly as possible and win the game before Adrian can get going. Both of these players 6-0 coming up next.
And welcome back to coverage here of Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. We're in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Marshall Cyclist with Monty Davuti, and we are all set up for a little more Pioneer action. Thank you so much for joining us. We did Limited earlier in the day. Pioneer now. Tomorrow, by the way, we'll be back with Limited in the morning and more Pioneer as well as we work our way towards our top eight, which will happen on Sunday. We'll hope you'll join us for that as well. For now, though, two old standbys in Pioneer, but they're winning a lot. We've actually got two undefeated players here. You see Adrian Inigo on the left there, 6-0, and, oh, and he's got Lotus Field, and there's Matthew Giudice on the right, 6-0. and oh. Is it Phoenix? So this is kind of the classic. Yeah, this one is... One of the classic matchups. One of the classic matchups is a Phoenix, the most played deck in the room, Lotus Field, the fourth most played deck, and notably for Adrian, he's feeling good because it, the best or second best matchup for Lotus Field, and definitely the worst matchup for the Phoenix, is okay, this. Right. Uh, so okay. Adrian, he's feeling pretty good about his potential chances to go to 7-0, though of course, in Magic, anything can happen. Nothing is predetermined. Yeah. All right, let's, let's see how things go here. Slide of hand is gonna kick things off for Matthew. The reason this matchup is so lopsided mm -hmm. for Phoenix is you don't really pressure the Lotus Field combo deck enough, mm. and you don't really have much interaction. Game one, most Phoenix decks have access to two spell pierce. Some even only have one. And that's about all you can do to disrupt your opponent. So the more you can get on the battlefield into the form of pressure, Phoenixes, Ledger Shredders, etc., the more you can amp up the damage, the better. Because as we've seen, Lotus Field Combo is a turn four or five deck. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting because if you don't follow competitive magic closely and you heard about an Is It Phoenix deck and you know Arclight Phoenix, you know, you'd think, oh, well, they have probably a bunch of counters, right? Like it wants to cast spells and stuff, but it can't afford to. It needs to stack up those spells in one turn, so they need to be proactive, and it has precious few slots for reactive spells. Got Arclight Phoenix? Yep. Resolve free to pay? One Phoenix in the yard. That was a Picklock Prankster, a new addition. And that graveyard's filling up mighty quick, Monty. It is filling up, and importantly, Temporal Trespass, the card found off of the Picklock Prankster, or the Free the Fate spell, I should say. And that is one of the cards that can really ramp up the pressure because it's a time walk. It gives you an extra turn. So. In terms of not being fast enough, well, one of the things that makes you faster is having a whole extra turn compared to your opponent. Oh, that's my favorite forest. <laughs> nice, Adrian. Oh, we're off. Speaking of new cards, we've got the Archdruid's Charm here. This has been a critical addition to the deck, you said. It, it really has. This is the reason that Lotus Field is, in my opinion, the fourth most played deck this weekend is just the addition of this card and everything it has given to the deck, the dynamic new lines that are available to it by being able to get a land instant speed, tutor for a Leer potentially with an extra card. There's a lot that this card does for the deck, but here, just being able to put a Thespian Stage directly into play, and the next turn you can go for Lotus Field, which I believe Adrian has in hand. The clock is on for Matthew. He needs to win, and he needs to win quick. He has one Arclight Phoenix in the yard right now, is that correct? That is correct. And he's going to go for a Treasure Cruise. Uh, I was it, it's, it, it's weird, because Treasure Cruise, great card. Yeah. But I don't think there is a second Phoenix in Matthew's hand. So I think he's probably going to be returning one Phoenix this turn, and then attack for six, but won't be able to go for the Temporal Trespass and won't be able to go for it next turn, probably. So with Adrian at 18, it might just not be enough over the course of two attacks, and then Adrian will definitely win the game. I see. Yeah, the pressure starting to build, but really just not that threatening for, from Adrian's perspective. Now, saving grace. I think I spotted a copy of Spell Pierce in Matthew's hand. Oh, so a copy of Spell Pierce? There's two in his list, okay. but there's one in his hand at the very least. <laughs> so if that's the case, yep. he's floated two mana. We've here. got something to work with. Yep. And that's going to be a cycled Vizier of Tumbling Sands. Can't interact with that. We watched Adrian 
on camera before. He played against the Izzet and Soul deck. Now, in that match where there was also Spell Pierce available, Adrian played around it beautifully. He really did. And I think Riley did an interview with him asking, hey, why aren't you nervous? This is your first pro tour. He's a professional athlete. He, he's used to pressure. This guy is cool yeah. under pressure. Cool. All right, well, he just decided to pass the turn back after getting the Lotus Field online. He figures it's unlikely I die this turn, and he can have himself two Lotus Fields, which is way more fun than just one. Yeah, the big test here for Matthew is can you cast the Temporal Trespass this turn? Currently, five cards in the yard. That's a cool. Spell Pierce. He almost put it in the yard, and then he's like, hold on now. I want that one. I think... Matthew is under the impression, probably oh, rightly so, that Adrian can't win through two spell pierces in the spot. And that'll be enough for him to win. Yep. Okay, start off though by copying Lotus Field. He has two of them. If Adrian has a hidden strings, I think Matthew's assumption might be incorrect. Uh oh. If Adrian's relying on going for a pour over the pages, double spell pierce will do the job, game will end. Mm -hmm. But if he starts off with a hidden strings, I think he'll have enough mana to win through two copies of spell pierce. Yep. All right, let's bring out the mana counters. Yep. All right, it's going to be impulse, and Matthew immediately says, sure. Oh, there's a pour over the pages. And a Vizier. It, it, interestingly, not really what he wants here. Nope. Although he may or may not know that. I mean, he's probably assuming there's one Spell Pierce available, right? I think he has to play as if there's yeah. one. And I don't know if he, if he can play as if there's two. It, it, perhaps, fortunately for him, because he had to start things off with an impulse, a pour over the pages now isn't playing around any Spell yeah. Pierces. So he may feel forced to take a Vizier if he sees a line that can play around one Spell Pierce. And maybe that leads to a Hidden Strings that can link things together. So okay. Because if he just goes grace. for four, he's dead, right? He's dead. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put a Lotus Field on the Thespian stage and see how long it stays there. These are the type of turns that can be very unforgiving if you're in Adrian's seat. You don't have a lot of wiggle room. You really have to make tough decisions about what am I actually able to play around. If you get wishy-washy, you're dead. This one's a little simpler because he's facing lethal, so the choices get narrowed down. Yeah, Lotus Field regularly touted as one of the hardest decks to play in Pioneer just because there's a lot of decision trees, most of them coming down to what cards you're taking off of your various draw spells, mm -hmm. what land drops you're making, and how you're sequencing them. So those early turns, really important. And this exact type of decision is where you can see the difference between an experienced Lotus Field player and maybe one that is not quite as comfortable with the deck. With making those decisions, right. yeah. Yeah, and the cool part about Phoenix is it gives you the illusion that you're doing that. Oh, and he's going to go for pour over the pages, and that is going to get spell pierced. And that's going to be game over. Game number one goes for, to Matthew, and as you mentioned, anything can happen, even in a bad matchup. Yeah, I think ultimately we couldn't see a full look at Adrian's hand, but he weighed all of his options and came to the realization that some percentage of the time, Matthew is going to have the spell pierced. Mm -hmm. But... I can't really take a Vizier here and try to win the game. And okay. if I don't win, I lose. Yeah, we'll so I should just field. take this pour over the pages yeah. and go for it. Yeah. And he picked up his cards about as quickly as he put that pour over the pages on the battlefield. He knew exactly what was up. OK. Top of the library with the scry there. And no play yet for Matthew this turn. So post board. Does Matthew get to bolster this matchup a bit, or is it still tough? It gets a little better. Uh -huh. it, it's still not favored for Phoenix, but you get access to more counter spells. You get access to more pressure. Cool. Two copies of Young Pyromancer, for oh, example. Okay. Those coming okay. in means that you have more two drops the pressure. Young, Young Pyromancer can go pretty wide, and you have some amount of confidence. Adrian doesn't have an answer for it. So definitely gets better, still not good. The best thing for Matthew right now is he broke serve. Yeah. He yeah. won game one, yeah. which means even if he loses this game, game three, he'll be on the play. And that's what really matters because game one is the worst one. It's the one where you have the least interaction and the least pressure. Wow. So, so that was a huge win for him. That was a big, 
big win for Matthew, and that is what puts 7-0 really in his sights. Wow, yep. let's see if he can do it. We see that Adrian's got the Lotus yep. Field here, or I should say Lotus Fields. Did he have enough mana that, yeah, yeah he did. does, okay. All right. Well, that's an explosive start. Yep. Spell Pierce in Matthew's hand, I believe, uh, at least one. Might be two. Uh, I think I see Ether Gust and Spell Pierce in Matthew's hand. Okay. So, yeah. amount of interaction available, adding up. Ether Gust is a weird one because it doesn't hit all of the draw spells, mm -hmm. but at some point in Adrian's comboing off, he's going to want to cast an Emergent Ultimatum. Oh, That's right. a green card. That's the one you're trying to hit. Very nice. By the way, that Vizier of Tumbling Sands just holding back the young Pyromancer. Yeah, Matthew can't afford to be proactive in the spot, trying to go for cantrips, especially post-board. The Phoenix decks make up changes when you're being more reactive, when mm -hmm. you're being more aggressive. You don't really have the same number of draw spells or tools to just go spell, 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 set this up. So. Even though it's uncommon, you just saw a turn three pass, no spells cast, yeah. no land development from Matthew. Yeah, it was weird. They have so many cheap cards that you can just churn through. All right, here's a pour with one mana floating, and that one's going to get... Mystical Disputed. Thank you. And another and a spell pierce as well. Yeah, that bicycle dispute looks sweet. It's very gorgeous. I think from the regional championship qualifiers, oh, okay. or just yeah, yeah. the regional championship, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I like that yeah, one. Really nice, and I think Matthew has another one in hand as well to go along with the Ether Gust. So his hand is reactive, but. Okay, is this a good thing? Having access to all of this? Yeah, like he is making 1 1, so is his game plan actually advancing? I, I've just seen sometimes where people get really reactive and they stop everything for a while, but they don't do anything themselves, and then the other person just rebuilds again. I think right now it's a pretty good thing. Okay. He, he just built up a lot of pressure. The turn where we said he didn't develop, his opponent gave him an opportunity to play three counter spells and make three 1-1s. One okay. So suddenly, Matthew did develop. He, there's no point where he's skipped or fallen behind. Mm -hmm. He is the aggressor. He has access to a treasure cruise in hand. He has access to an Aether Gust still. So even though he no longer is able to counter the smaller draw spells, he is able to put Adrian behind. Okay, Valaged recovery here from Adrian. And what did he get back up for? Yeah. Okay. I love this choice from Matthew not to get short sighted and Aether Gust the Valaged recovery saying, hey, maybe I'll just keep stopping you and keep putting on pressure. Mm -hmm. That Aether Gust is reserved exclusively for an emergent alternative. Okay, right he's now. just going to hold on to it. He's just going to hold on to it. Is that an opt? That was an opt. Okay. Continuing to add pressure on. Combat. Sure. Element with the e. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's the combat look like here? Yep. Oh, look at that. Adrian's gonna take all of it. Uh, you already played eleven. Oh, he did block. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, he, did, he forgot to he, block. He marked the life down, then wanted to block. Yeah. And it was strange. Said, you already said eleven. Yep. Which yeah. Unfortunately, is a verbal indicator that you haven't. Made a block. It was so. just a little weird because he went right for the life. I just, why, why not block? You know. Yeah, I think uh, a little yeah. instinctive there. But this, Marshall, is that Dragon Lord Dramoka? Dramoka? Yeah. <laughs> what? Off of an archer's charm? Yeah. Uh, uh, boarded yeah. in, drew it. Now here's the bad news. It can't be countered, but it can be ether gusted oh. uh, if Edgy yeah. goes for it. So when I said it was reserved exclusively for emergent ultimatum, I suppose I, we I, did I, find it. I, I was wrong. I, I found I found a different target for it. Oh man, this is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Not, inter <laughs> not <laughs> interesting. Not interesting. I guess I'm going to cast my ether gust. Yep. You didn't really give me a choice there. Five. And so that'll put it back on top of library. Yep. Look, Dramoka has lifelink. Coming mm -hmm. down, it, it's going to completely stop the aggression from Matthew. So this card is game-breaking. So is that going to happen next turn? Yes. Hopefully, assuming there is a next turn uh -huh. for Adrian, yes. Ooh, here's oh, here's a pour over the pages, though. <laughs> it's going to happen this turn. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> yeah, it, it resolved. It's happening this turn. Because those are all Lotus Fields on the battlefield, right? All three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Boy, uh, Adrian was just sort of testing the fence, right? He, yep. Okay, no, this this one's not open. I'll go down here. And then he finally got his head through there. And uh, now it looks like the floodgates are going to open up. Marshall, I've been so impressed by Adrian's play over the two matches that we've seen him play today. Mm -hmm. This is really just great understanding of the matchup. One yeah. of the big things in the Lotus Field combo deck is you have an almost transformative sideboard package, but you also have a wish package oh. from the uh, from Fae of Wishes. Granted, yeah. uh, so wish granted, going for that, you have to make choices. And the choice to bring in the Dramoka as a tutor target and that Archdruid's charm Dude. making that a viable look, tutor target, look at that. it's over. It just ended the game. Yeah. Matthew's like, I don't want to play anymore. Let's yeah. go to game three. That's yeah. the Dramoka effect. Wow, that was impressive. Also, man, that is wild. Archdruid's charm comes in. This deck picks it up. It does really great things with the land, and now somehow that just happened? Like, it just won in the game. The tutor effect of the card for creatures cannot be overstated oh. here. It is That's a very important piece of the puzzle for the Lotus Field combo deck, both with the creature in the main deck and the options that you have in the sideboard. And the mana's fine. Oh, yeah. The mana's... It, they don't... Speaking to some Lotus Field players, mm -hmm. the mana is a bit strained with it, but not enough for you to not play it. Yeah, because it's weird, because the Lotus Field casts it itself, so that's nice, but you use it yeah. to get the Lotus Field, so you do need to make triple green. Exactly. There is one Lotus Field player this weekend who is not playing the Archdruid's Charm. What? It, <laughs> Sean Goddard, Beekeeper, yeah. doing well in this event, by the way. He is not playing the Archdruid's Charm, and he has reasoning for it. I spoke to him last night. It made some amount of sense. All right. We'll see. Boy, that's a... If I, if I was a... If I was playing Lotus Field, I, that's a toy I could not yeah. put down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would be like, I am playing that thing. By the way, great start here from Adrian. You see he got the Arboreal Grazer, and uh, that actually got him the Lotus Field. Yep. Turn early, and it looks like he's going to have two of them. Terrible start for Matthew. Yeah, Has Ledger the Ledger Shredder, Shredder three Phoenixes in hand with no way to and discard that, yep. them, and a Treasure Cruise and some lands. Uh, yep, not putting on that much pressure, okay. not drawing cards, That's no counter spells. This game might just be over here, all this things is considered. Incredible. He's tapped out. Yeah, Matthew's tapped out. Free reign. <laughs> Adrian did find the block this time, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> for on the Shredder. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Will he pull up? Oh, yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the bad news if you're sitting in Matthew's seat. As yeah. soon as the mana <laughs> mana indicators come out, it's like sit back. And you know, this is a new. We, we've lived through the days of storm. Oh this, yeah. This this is this is an occurrence that professional and competitive Magic players have been dealing with for decades yes, at this point. It's true. But when you're yeah. tapped out and you see the mana indicators come out, it's like, all right. Yep. Cool. That means they're going for it. Let's see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Let, let's see what's going on here, Adrian. There is no guarantee. No. Uh, Adrian's had, I don't see everything he needs. I do see a copy of, I think, Narset's Reversal, as well as a Lotus Field, a Voyaging Seder. So these are not cards that win the game. He's got Charm, too. All right. Well, <laughs> Dramoka. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Th there it is. And you see Matthew. And is there anything he can do here? We saw him fend it away for a turn. Slide of Not even is a great a turn, start. Okay. <laughs> Don't want Let's the treasure cruise. cruise. Land. Okay. Yeah, he's only got one card in the yard this time. I think that's an Odawara. So that can bounce. Does that work? Okay. It, it can bounce uh, Dramoka for a turn. Yeah. Okay, and he's casting another yep. Phoenix. So it's going to resolve anyway, and then you untap, bounce it, and slam again? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I like no, this. They, Let's go, Matthew. There, there, there's a line. You're tapped out again. But he may need to find right. another yeah. another way to yeah. set it back. Yeah. I guess if he has that a way. land as well, he may be able to send it to the top of the library on the way it's back hidden down. Strings. That is a lot of mana. <laughs> He's at eleven. Yeah. I don't know. That Odawara is a really good find for Matthew because he can't Narcissus reversal that one. Mm. So there is this Arboreal Grazer. It can block some of the damage. But this is this is close. This is closer than you would think it would be. Yeah, that second Phoenix definitely added some punch there. Down to 11 is Adrian. 
I mean, he's looking at a hand of six cards. You kind of feel like he can figure out something. I mean, yes, if your plan is just to cast Dragon Lord Dromoka, great. I mean, that is very difficult to deal with, and Matthew may not have a lot going with it. But what about if he's got poor? What if, you know? What if he can just start going through his library the good old-fashioned way with Lotus Field? Yeah. Beautiful. I think we are going to be in a position where Matthew is going. Adrian is going to play Dromoka. Matthew is. Go, maybe Adrian will use hidden strings to make some additional mana so he can get a Voyaging Seater down as well, just make a bit of more of a board presence. But ultimately, turn will go back to Matthew. Matthew will auto war Dromoka, attack with everything. Adrian will block with the Arboreal Grazer, take some damage, and any draw spell might just end the game. <laughs> Emergent Ultimatum will almost certainly end the game. Mm -hmm. Leer will probably not be good enough. So that's at least safe. Yep. And this is just the big question mark now for Matthew wow. is. By the way, that happened literally exactly how you said. Right. Right. So <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Hidden strings into Voyaging Seder. And you have the Narthus re and the reversal Dromoka. up. This is the big thing is you want the reversal up in case there's an Aether Gust or something here. But unfortunately, the answer that Matthew has Unfortable. is Odawara. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's back to hand. This is not lethal, though. Don't take the damage immediately. You do have a grazer. <laughs> he picked up that pen yeah. scary fast. We've seen this before. Yeah. The question is, are you blocking the Ledger Shredder? Right. Or are you throwing the grazer away to block a phoenix because you want to value your life total? I am scared, and I think I'm going to block a phoenix. Yep, I agree. Down to seven. It's still enough in the air for lethal, I suppose. I went for yeah. Okay, so the question here is just if you just recast Dragon Lord Dromoka, are you fine? Depends what he draws. He oh. has, oh, this <laughs> he is has a, enough mana this to is play really around stressful. the spell pierce. I thought this yep. was supposed to be a good matchup. It is, yeah. but all sometimes right. you miss. There it is. Dragon Actually. Lord Dromoka all in. Anything can happen in magic. Hold. <laughs> You're sitting in Atrian's seat. That's a consider. Okay, he also okay. threw a third Phoenix, okay. but that's still not enough. Free the Fey. Opt. Land, land. Narcissus reversal of his own. Okay. Mm -mm. Can I get the Oak Protector to not please? <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's got. Yeah. Uh... Oh, and there it is. Every, everybody was wondering, what does this one do again? 5 7, flying lifelink. Spells you control cannot be countered, and Dromoka cannot be countered. I believe. I believe you. <laughs> I, I said it with enough confidence that you probably can. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Not can that. Your opponent can't cast spells during your turn. Oh, even worse. On your turn, it's just, Seven, you sit uh, back now. Uh, so is it good enough? Yeah. If he found, I guess it's too late for that now, but what if it was all four yeah. Phoenix? Would that be enough? Blocks go to 12, 3, 6, 9, 10, yeah, 11. He'd be one short. Yeah. He narsets reversal. I think he's getting a counter on the shredder here. Oh, he did? Oh, he narsets. Uh, oh, oh. It, he drew the archmate, arch to his charm. That's he's Aether going to fight Gust. a phoenix. No, and he's going to gain the life? He's going to gain the life. I knew the plus one, plus one, plus one in fight matters. I knew it. <laughs> oh, He's wow. used all the modes. All the modes have been used. Incredible. Yeah. That Narcissus Reversal, drawing three cards, found an Archdruid's Charm Marshal. Wow. It's, it's being Aether Gusted. It, it is going to yeah. not be long for this world, Correct. but the life gain is going to give him that buffer. Third Phoenix will be coming back, so nine damage is still coming across. Okay, the so then he recasts Dragon Lord Dromoka again, assuming it sticks. Well, I think that's what he's thinking uh, about, uh, is if I recast Dromoka, do I just yeah. lose? Right. Uh, and the answer is Probably no. not, uh, from what we know. You don't just lose. Right. If it disappears, you're dead. Yes, <laughs> correct. But this will hold. Yeah. Okay, Impulse. That's Lear. What is he looking for? I, oh. He found a Leer? Leer is pretty good. He found a Leer. Because that's what I keep thinking about is, like, Dragon Lord Dromoka is cool, but, like, he also has much bigger, better things to do. Like, I just win the game this turn. Oh, and there's Leer. Yeah. The big issue is there's only one real draw spell in the form of Impulse in the graveyard. There's Hidden Strings to make more mana. There's Archdruid's Charms, but there's no pour over the pages in that graveyard. 
So, yeah. so he's going to need to find a way to keep that velocity going through the library. Hidden strengths ciphered onto <laughs> the yes. Seder. Yes. As you do. You can cast the impulse again. So this is what I was going to ask. Is there a world where he does both? And look at that. Gets in with Seder. Yeah, you untap yeah, your lands this way. That is sweet. Again. All right. Yeah. I I don't think you... I think you can just pass now because, Marshall, you have access to two Archdruids yeah. shots now. That's two more fights. Yeah. That's, what, six plus seven? That's 13 life gain up to f 17. Right, and he's not facing lethal currently. Yep. Yeah, Matthew needs to be yeah. proactive. Yeah. You can see Lear there again. Yeah. Anytime, anytime you're playing at this level, you can ask for what they call the oracle text. You know, what does the card say? Just if somebody's playing a language that you can't read. read or anything alike along those lines. Another free the Fae. None of those really do anything. I think if you're Matthew, you need to take... Okay. That's not it, because yeah. Lear has the text, spells can't be countered. So Spell Pierce doesn't really do anything. Yeah, Lear and Dromoka together, who's having fun? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe a small misstep for Matthew taking the Spell Pierce there. Mm -hmm. uh, does still have an opt-in hand, does have more digging to do. But I, I think Matthew is slowly but surely sinking into uh, the unwinnable position. <laughs> Go to combat, just kidding. And this is where Adrian is going to pick up a yeah. really nice insurance plan yeah. and gain himself a bunch of life. And now Adrian can attack. That's, that yeah. is really the sinking feeling that Matthew has right now is... Yeah. And he's going to go for impulse here, still on end step. All right, that's a poor and immersion ultimatum. I think we're done here. Okay. Yeah. Wow, good fight for Matthew, though. Really, like, he made this super interesting. Incredibly tight match. So close. This game could have been over multiple different ways. Adrian navigated it masterfully mm -hmm. with the right blocks, with the right decisions. Matthew tried to maximize his pressure. Really nice stuff. But just ultimately, this is the issue. And... Again, Arshura's charm, the fight mode, the tutor mode, finding Dramoka, it's so good in this deck, Marshall. Incredible. Button hand. Uh, you cannot have the petition. So he says, no petition for you. Yep. Dark petition's going to be the one that he doesn't I get. Will, yep. Uh, yep. And that's going to do it. Adrian Inigo picks up the win here. He had to earn that, but he's 7-0. Oh. Yeah, he said, I'll use the charm. I'll go get Fae of Witches. I have the win. Wow, that was really impressive stuff from both players. And you can see how they got to that stage of being 6-0. and oh. They're playing really well. Yeah, absolutely. I think both players seem like they were in the zone, making great decisions, going late in the day. These days are long. It takes a lot out of you. So to be operating at that level at 6-0 and oh in the seventh round, really nice stuff. Really, really good stuff. And uh, we'll look for more from them tomorrow because they will certainly be back, no doubt about it. We've got a little more magic to bring you today. But first, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll have Maria and Cedric at the desk. Don't go anywhere.